Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today, we're going to learn a neat trick that leverages the ability to have callable functions in resource scripts to embed customizable logic in other resource files, such that we can code without coding. Wait, what? Imagine you're writing an RPG, and you've got a bunch of NPCs wandering around. You want these NPCs to react to the player depending on whether or not the player has done a particular thing, such as having completed a quest. For example, if the player kicked the puppy outside of town, none of the shopkeepers will sell to them. And rightly so. Now, let's also imagine that we've designed our class hierarchy such that shopkeepers are an inherited class from our basic NPCs. You might think that you just embed the code to avoid the player directly into the shopkeeper's GD script code, and you totally could. But what if you wanted a specific type of shopkeeper to ignore the embargo because he hates puppies? Heck, what if you wanted one individual shopkeeper to act this way or add a singular extra condition to his player ignoring logic? Sure, you could subclass the shopkeepers into puppy-hating shopkeepers, or attach a new script to the lone shopkeeper, who is desperately searching for some individuality in his pointless existence, but dear lord, wouldn't it just be easier to click a few buttons and call it a day? Forget about shopkeepers. What if you wanted to just provide a way to set up some code without coding, like for a visual novel? The fact that resources can run code is a doorway to endless clever nonsense like the topic of today's video. First, let's create a new script that extends resource and call it condition. A condition is something that needs to evaluate to true in order for our particular action, like ignoring the player, to take place. We'll define an empty method called evaluate that returns a boolean variable and will return false by default. This class is abstract. We're never actually going to call it directly, but we will subclass it for various types of conditions. The first one we'll do simply checks if a global flag is set. Create a new script class that extends condition and call it flag condition. Define two variables, flag and status. Flag is going to be the value you check, and status is what value it should be. For example, I might use one of these conditions to check if the player has completed a particular quest or taken a particular action, like kicking the aforementioned puppy outside of town. Unfortunately, you will need to design some way to designate the variables that your conditions have access to, and that is going to depend heavily on the architecture of your game. For this example, I'm going to assume a global auto-loaded class called quests that has the following enum defined, and also contains helper methods to indicate whether or not the provided flag has been set. If you'd like to learn more about flags and how they work, you can watch my video on bit flags, which I'll link in the description below. Regardless, the flag variable has to be exportable and its type is going to be quests.questflags, since those are the flags we want this conditional class to be able to check. We'll define an enum within the condition class itself that has the values set and not set so that we can indicate which condition we want to check for. Next, we need to evaluate the condition. In the flag conditions evaluate method, check whether or not the status variable is set or not set. If it's set, then we return whether or not the flag is set. If it's not set, we return whether or not the flag is not set. Next, in order to use this in your game, you simply provide an exportable variable to your NPC class or wherever you need to check a flag and then, in the script for that class, only trigger the action if the condition evaluates to true. But wait, I hear you cry. What if I want multiple conditions, possibly of different types? Well, that's easy. Let's do that next. We can create a child class of condition called condition group, which contains an exportable array where all of the members of that array are conditions themselves. We're allowed to do this because of the wonders of polymorphism, which is a computer science concept whereby you can hold a reference to a child class in a variable of its base class's type. We could also just leave the array undefined, but this lets Godot enforce the type so that we don't make any rude errors six months down the line. Anyway, we then override the evaluate method in this condition group and have it loop through every condition in the array. If any one of them evaluates to false, then we break out of the loop and return false. Otherwise, we return true. And since, due to the aforementioned polymorphism, we don't even have to change our NPC code in order to use a condition group because it derives some condition and calls the same method as the base class. And that's it! Leveraging code in resources is an invaluable trick that can save you a lot of time in the long run. And now comes the time on Game Gems where we like, subscribe, and join my Patreon to keep the coffee and gems flowing. See you next time!